Good morning, um, good afternoon, wherever you are. I'm Lumumba Mukong, the country coordinator for Mission 21 in Cameroon. Uh, I am married, a father of four. I work with a great team in providing help of various forms to people who are internally displaced and also working with churches and different organizations or development projects. This morning, I would like to tell you the stories of war in Cameroon and uh, maybe as we go along, you'll get to know a bit about the situation in Cameroon and what we face on a daily basis. What Simon just said about secondary stress hit me so hard because it is something which we experience in our trauma centers, hearing the stories and getting into the lives of those who are traumatized and, or, and are sometimes stigmatized. It gives us also stress. And secondly, she talked about self-care. We preach self-care and we try to do self-care, but I think we need to improve. So okay. That's it for the introduction. Maybe you can take the next slide. Um, I'm talking from a background of violence and fragility. Since 2016, uh, the main regions in which Mission 21, the organization for where I work, is involved, has gone through a lot of uh, violence. The reasons are political, and I don't want to go into that. But at Mission 21, we don't look about the reasons of the violence and the fragility, but we look into the results. And these results in terms of numbers of uh, people who are internally displaced and many of them who are also gone on exile, especially to Nigeria. And these people who are displaced are increasing in numbers every day because the conflict is ongoing and the violence is from both sides. People suffer from the hands of non-state armed groups and from the hands of state armed groups. And this gives uh, a sense of despair. So I would say everybody working or living within these regions is in a sense traumatized, is in a sense violated. So we're all living in a situation of violence, of trauma, and there is a need for somebody to talk to these people. As in all situations of war, women and children bear the brunt of the suffering. They are the first to be displaced under circumstances which are not good. And they move into places where they don't have relatives or they have relatives who are also as desperate as they are. And then the basic need of shelter and food lead these people into vulnerabilities. They tend to accept working and housing conditions which put them at risk, which put them at the perpetrator's door. And so these are the type of people we are talking about. These are the people who are talking, telling you the stories today. Can we go to the next slide? Mission 21 has been in Cameroon for a very long time, doing basically development and evangelical work. But since the onslaught, since the oncoming of the violence and the war in the English speaking parts of Cameroon, Mission 21, together with the partners, especially the Presbyterian Church in Cameroon, started to intervene to give assistance to the internally displaced people. As you can imagine, the first years of our work, 2018 and 2019, was a lot more focused on provision of life-saving assistance, giving people food, providing them shelter, giving people sanitation material for women, and helping in medical bills. But more and more, as the numbers of displaced persons increase and 
the conditions of displacement became very, very difficult. We started hearing the stories of the people who have been displaced and how they are affected, how the separation, physical violence on them, the poor reception in some communities is causing them sleepless nights and they hallucinate. And so we decided to say healing trauma and building resilience is an important thing. So we went into this arena of trauma healing and resilience building. Uh, we started a lot with building capacities of partners, both in Cameroon and in Nigeria. And we've ended up now having two trauma centers which handle cases of violence. And these are the cases that we've looked at and we're trying to present four of them. Can we go to the next slide? So I want, I'm going to give you four cases out of 40 cases which I studied of late. The first one, three of them are female and one is a male. The first case is the case of Anne, and all the names we use are pseudonyms. Their real names are confidential, as you understand. Anne is a, is a single mom. She has two daughters from two different men. She's internally displaced. Anne's story, how did we come to work with Anne? Anne who is economically weak. Anne whose two daughters have been raped by the same person, came to us through the daughters. Anne's daughters were referred to us uh, by a church. And so the, one of the daughters was known to have been raped. And so she came for counseling. And we used for, for them, because they are Christians, a Christian-based counseling model, which, still tell, which tells people, though you are hurt, God still loves you. Though you are hurt, God can forgive. God can let you forgive those who have hurt you. But this does not take away the criminal act. And this does not absolve the, the, the perpetrator of the violence from punish, legal punishment. And so in counseling the, the daughter who was raped, the junior daughter who is six, it was realized that the same person who raped the daughter, the, the, the junior daughter, had raped the first daughter. And this same guy is the stepbrother of the first daughter. Anne is emotionally and psychologically disturbed and traumatized. She couldn't do, she couldn't do anything because the father of her first daughter is a powerful person, politically and economically, and she was disabled by her own economic situation. And so now, after working with the daughters who accepted to forgive and prayed that the, the, the brother who did this thing to them should be flogged. Now the attention was turned to Anne. And we worked with Anne. And even after work, you can go to the next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay. After working with Anne, sorry, after working with Anne, we realized that Anne needs some economic support, which we provided to her, and she's doing her business and reporting to us regularly. Uh, then our second case is Jane. Jane is the mother of, uh, she's 39 years old, mother of three, and she was married at 16. Being married at 16 is unusual for the tribe in which Jane comes from. She was pushed into marriage and she has lived in a toxic relationship with the husband. She was physically abused, psychologically tormented and financially abused. Jane's first child is 22 and these three children have also witnessed their mother being beaten, 
deprived of even visits and deprived of the means to buy basic needs. And today, she's going through a separation. She's, she's separated from the husband and they're going through a process which will definitely one day lead to divorce. I think for those who know Cameroon, uh, the divorce process is not easy, especially if you are not economically strong. Next slide, please. When Jane came to our center in Bamenda, she looked devastated and drained. Uh, physically, she was, looking, she was looking about 45, though she's 39. And working with the counselors, she went through a six-week period of assessing her situation. Mm -hmm. In assessing her situation, Jane could examine what happened to her. I think for those who were here yesterday, you could listen to the story of Mary uh, from Cameroon who said she had to assess herself and her situation. I think we gave Jane the opportunity and the safe space to sit down and really have time to be reflecting and say, yes, this has happened to me. What role did I play? What role did my parents play? What role did my friends play? What role did my husband play? And how has this affected our relationship and me physically and, and, and mentally? And Jane is going through some improvements. Uh, Jane is still very, very afraid of the estranged husband. But the one thing Jane has decided to do is while she continues counseling, she's willing to take legal action. Next slide, please. And take a legal action. Jane is now in just legal advisor. Because of all these cases we started seeing and we realized that it is important to have somebody who can talk to, to, talk to um, uh, our clients from a legal perspective. And so Jane is now talking to a legal counsel advisor and hopefully we'll follow the matter uh, to a point where Jane can be real, fully reinstalled in a, in a human being, as a human being. Thank you. Can we go to another case number three? Uh, case number three is Clarice. Clarice is 49. She's also a mother of three. And she is married to a husband who has tormented her since she got married. Uh, Jane was forced into marriage because she had an early, uh, she had a child at, at a youthful age. And her parents decided to ask her to go into marriage. And it seems she was forced into marriage. And so the husband also see her as forced up upon him. And so feels obliged or feels the right to treat her the way he wants to. And so Jane, Gladys is going through a lot of um, torments. And in all of this situation, the children are seeing this, the, the mother go through this horrible situation. All of these cases have been compounded because of the displacement. The, these people had some coping mechanisms where they were before the crisis. Since they've moved out of their comfort zones into places where they had their community support, they are really, really now in deep trouble because they don't, they are, the husbands who tend to be the breadwinner and the powerful person can easily associate in communities and they, they lack the social support. And these are centers from the place where they can find support. So that's why these cases are more traumatizing. So forced into marriage, tormented by the husband, lacking social support where she is as a displaced person is really, really traumatizing. And Jane has worked, would work for us for 10 months. She's having a, an hour a week with us which we try to make Jane, who was like said, she's useless, she's nothing, she's not a nobody, to see that she's somebody. And gradually, Jane has been able to tilt her mind, to see her image as she used to be, as young as she was, 
when she when she was beautiful, intelligent. So Jane is trying to see herself in that position. And Jane has decided to write a letter to the dad, who is of late, to explain to the dad that all I wanted to tell you about the first marriage, I couldn't tell you, but I suffered today. But one thing I've learned, I'll try to be a better parent. And it's so consoling to, consoling to Jane. Jane for us continues with the counseling and to also to find for her some means to start a small business. It's a next step. Uh, James is the only man, uh, male we are presenting in this uh, four case. He is married with two children. Uh, he, is work, he worked like a forester. He had a business. And due to the war, he has been uh, physically abused. He has lost his business. And his sight is failing him. He's feeling greatly depressed and lonely. Because when all of these things happened to him, the wife and the two children abandoned him to his brother. And for a man to feel abused, uh, I think there is something which makes him to see that, which is more humiliating because he says, okay, so I can also get to this low point. Uh, maybe for women, in our society, they have accepted that maybe abuse is part of their life, but for a man to be abused or to be left alone, to be in a situation where you cannot do anything, you cannot help yourself, it's, it's more traumatizing. We don't, we don't want to go into the reasons why the wife and children abandoned him. We are focusing on the fact that he feels lonely, he feels depressed. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, his healing process started by a visit by one of our partners to communities to talk to people who have been internally displaced. Uh, and in this process, we they came to visit the home where James lives. And talk, they talked to James. And from then on, these counselors have been visiting them, uh, James. And over a period of about six months today, James is trying to see that even in his loneliness, in his abandonment, there is still hope for him. And he now thinks about the fact that even with the failing sight, he can still go back into his business. And he sees that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and it's giving him some hope. We just hope that we'll be able to continue with him and uh, that he can be able to start his business and be reinstated into society. These are the four cases we want to present. And in the last slide, I just want to say uh, our perspective is that through the trauma healing and resilience centers we have, we want to see a Cameroon society where people could be able to manage their traumatic past with hope of the future. Well, thank you very much. <laughs>